I'm Georgia Woods and welcome to GoFly Online. For today's video we are going to look at how to read a windsock. On most aerodromes there are two types of windsocks, a primary windsock and a secondary windsock. Most CTAF aerodromes, also known as Common Traffic Advisory Frequency Aerodromes, have one or more windsocks. The primary windsock is usually located in the centre of the aerodrome. The position of the primary windsock can be located in the ursa and is normally represented by a small triangle. The primary windsock is usually white and most are rated at 30 knots. Secondary windsocks are usually smaller or yellow in colour and may be situated closer to the ends of each runway. Some of these secondary windsocks are only rated to 20 knots. For today's purposes, we will just be looking at how to read a primary windsock. From the angle of the windsock from the ground, we can now get an accurate idea of wind strength. As advised, most primary windsocks are 30 knot windsocks, meaning that when they are at full deflection or 90 degrees to the ground, they are reading 30 knots. From this, we can roughly work out the wind strength. For example, if the windsock is at 45 degrees from the ground, the wind strength is 15 knots. If the windsock is showing one third of 90 degrees from the ground, we can assume the wind is reading around 10 knots or one third of 30 knots. The other great thing a windsock can do is indicate the direction the wind is coming from. As an easy to remember rule, the windsock points to where the wind is going, meaning the tip of the windsock will always point to where the wind is travelling to. Very simply, this means if the tip of the windsock is pointing west, we know the wind is coming from the east. Let's now take a look at some different examples of wind direction and wind speed with runway 12 at Caloundra. Here we can see the windsock is pointing in line with the runway. This means that runway 12 has a headwind from an easterly direction as the windsock is pointing to the west. Notice the direction of the windsock is parallel with the runway. This means there is no crosswind component. If we look side on, we can see the windsock is at 45 degrees from the ground, meaning we have a 15 knot headwind. Now we can see the windsock direction is around 45 degrees offset from the runway. The windsock is pointing to the northwest, which means the wind is coming from the southeast. As the windsock is not parallel with the runway and is about 45 degrees offset from the runway, we can estimate there is a crosswind at 45 degrees off to our left on takeoff. You can work out the crosswind component by going to the crosswind conversion table in the URSA to ensure your aircraft crosswind limitations are not exceeded. If we look at the windsock, we can see it is two-thirds deflection from the ground. So being a 30 knot windsock, we can deduce the wind must be around 20 knots, which is two-thirds of 30. If the windsock was positioned 90 degrees from the runway, we can assume there is now a complete crosswind from the right on takeoff. If the windsock is moving up and down constantly, this means the wind is gusting and care should be taken when flying. CASR 91.380 makes it very clear that when possible an aircraft must take off and land into the wind. Not only this, but it can be very dangerous to try to take off and land with a large tailwind or large crosswind component. While you may already have received the forecast wind prior to takeoff, checking the windsock and using this to decide what runway to use and planning to take off into the wind is imperative. It's always a good idea to check the windsock before you start your pre-flight to ensure the wind direction and speed does not exceed the limitations of your aircraft type or your experience level with the runways that are available. After doing the engine and airframe checks, always check the primary windsock to confirm the active runway. Remember, there may be an aircraft using a runway that does not correspond with the windsock and the best in-to-wind runway. In this instance, as the pilot in command, you would make a radio call advising of the preferred in-to-wind runway and the runway you will be using. Don't always trust that another aircraft has chosen the correct runway. If you are joining the circuit or doing circuits, it's important to check the windsock prior to landing to ensure you choose the interwind runway to land. 
Flying overhead and looking at the windsock can be confusing, particularly if you are flying the opposite way to the wind direction. An easy way is to have the windsock on your left hand side and once again watch where the wind is pointing to. If it is pointing towards the west, you know the wind is coming from the east. If you are still confused on what runway to use, simply turn the aircraft towards the opposite way of where the windsock is pointing. This will place the aircraft into wind and it will be easier to visualise the into wind runway and where the active and inactive side of the circuit is. I hope this video has helped with understanding how to read a windsock. Happy and safe flying and see you next time on Go Fly Online.